The Thin Green Line is a book by Paul Sullivan that talks about mindset, decisions and behaviors that lead the wealthy people into wealth and let them preserve it, as well as the opposites that keep others from becoming and or staying wealthy. Now the author's first insight into the way the wealthy actually think was while he was writing a column for the New York Times in a company of multiple very wealthy members of a group called Tiger 21. The things he learned that day changed his way of thinking towards personal finance, led to further learning and new discoveries that he ultimately put in this book. In this video we will go over the key ideas and takeaways from the thin green line. But before we do, feel free to leave a like on the video, as every like, share and comment help the channel out tremendously and I really appreciate it. Oh, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe with the notifications turned on for more personal finance, investing, business and motivation related videos, as well as weekly book summaries. Takeaway number 1. The Thin Green Line Imagine a stock chart like chart with a thin green line on it that mostly keeps rising and spans over decades. This line separates the wealthy who are above the line from those who don't have the security of true wealth and are below it. And like even the rich can be under the line, as being rich doesn't mean you are wealthy and this is one of the key distinctions that you have to understand in order to secure your place above the line. But how is this possible? Well, if a person makes a lot of money but spends it all, or even more than they make on an extravagant lifestyle, they will never live in financial comfort. A school teacher with a paid off roof over her head, some savings and a decent pension is actually in a way better situation than them as she has financial comfort. Making a lot of money is not what makes you wealthy. Just look at all the famous actors and athletes who made millions and ended up being dirt poor in a few years. Becoming wealthy is more of a function of choices that we make that allow us to keep our money and invest it. A very significant trait that people above the line tend to have is a mindset that puts them in control of their lives and tends to keep them there. They achieve that simply by believing that they are to blame for everything that happens in their lives, be it good or bad. Ok, why is this so crucial? Well, if what happened was bad, they can work on fixing it and are less likely to repeat it. They don't allow external forces that they can't control to run their lives, simply by taking credit for their success and blame for their failures. Takeaway number 2. A goal for your money. Anyone who wishes to end up on the top side of the thin green line must know where each and every one of his dollars go. There must be a goal for the money. Now the problem with this for many people under the line is that since the money has no real purpose to them other than paying the bills, any additional money quickly evaporates and then reappears in a form of random luxuries. Any one of us can generally be put into one of the three types of spenders. Dissipators, making spenders or accumulators. Which one you land in can easily determine which side of the thin green line you land up on. A dissipator is a person who generates a lot of wealth young and is unlikely to ever repeat that. Common examples are star actors, athletes, entrepreneurs with once in a lifetime ideas, people with large inheritances and so on. It's how they choose to spend or save and invest that money that will dictate whether they will be wealthy or not. Making spenders spend the money as it comes or they even spend more than they make by buying things using credit. A making spender will never be financially free if that behavior persists though. Accumulators often get more pleasure from not spending the money. They rather save it and invest it. But this doesn't mean that they won't spend it on a justified cause. So if something provides them a lot of value or brings them a lot of happiness, they will buy it. Oh and besides just having goals for their money, the wealthy also tend to spend it on things that usually appreciate in value, such as real estate or their business, much rather than things that only lose value, such as cars, clothes, food and so on. Takeaway number 3. How the wealthy invest their money. Now the mistake that many investors make while picking their investments is just looking at stocks or funds that seem to be doing great at a time and then investing in them just because of the fear of missing out. They often have no idea what they are actually buying or why the price is going up but hey it's going up so gotta be part of the action. And when the momentum of such holding shifts and they start dropping, they see many people selling so they also sell. Again, oftentimes not knowing why they sold, other than the fact that many others were also selling. Uh, the term is not mentioned in the book, but this is today widely known as momentum investing. The wealthy do something different though, that's widely known as fundamental investing. 
Now the point here is in understanding the asset that you're buying and its underlying intrinsic value, then looking for market inefficiencies and capitalizing on them if possible and holding your investments over the long term. The wealthy people are also often less arrogant when it comes to investing. They quickly see and admit their investing mistakes and don't let those mistakes remain in the portfolio too long by selling at a loss instead of waiting too long for a rebound. Optimism, trust and self-confidence can be very dangerous enemies while investing. The wealthy sometimes use advisors to help them surmount those issues. Takeaway number 4. The Bordeaux Dilemma the author had the opportunity to taste some very fine wines in Bordeaux, France, and it created an interesting quote-unquote problem. After he tasted the fine wine once, all the other quote-unquote standard or even cheap wines tasted way worse than they did before. This created a desire to drink only fine wine all the time, and we all know that that would cost a fortune. That's the Bordeaux dilemma, a desire for something amazing but still expensive all the time, combined with the awareness that it would limit your ability to pay for more important things in life. This, naturally, doesn't apply only to wine. Fine food, luxury cars, brand new electronics and many other things can easily be somebody else's cause of a Bordeaux dilemma. The key to solving it is restraining yourself from spending too much money on such a luxury, but still allowing occasional indulgence. So, that's in other words a great balancing act, and it's the key to making sure your overindulgence doesn't end up costing you too much, even up to the point that you end up on the wrong side of the green line because of it. Obviously, the Bordeaux dilemma is pretty much what's commonly known as lifestyle inflation. If one was to simply adjust his spending upwards as his income grows and keep spending it all, the spending would prevent them from saving and investing and there would be no way for them to ever become financially free, as long as that behavior keeps up. So don't let your consumption make you broke. Takeaway number 5. What else do the wealthy invest in? The parents on the right side of the thin green line often tend to spend a lot of money on their children's education, in hopes of achieving a good impact on their lives and setting them up the best way possible. In a lot of cases, private schools do offer considerably better education and general environment compared to the public schools, and the wealthy people that attended private schools themselves are often even more likely to send their children to private schools also. That's all good, but the problem is that too many of them allow unlimited or practically unlimited budgets for their education, and that can easily end up being a very poor return on investments. On top of that, giving your children too much money or just whatever they want at a young age can create an entitlement mentality that will make them depend on your support their whole life. Teaching your children the real value of money, in other words, making them earn some of their own, can be a good way to avoid this. The wealthy love to give back a portion of their money. Studies show that 95% of high net worth households, in other words, households with net worth of over $1 million or more than 200k per year in earnings gave money to charity versus only 65% of the general population. And on top of that, wealthy donors also tend to give away larger portions of their net worth compared to the general population. Now less than a third give away just to get a tax deduction and half say they would keep giving even if the charitable tax deduction was completely eliminated. To summarize. The thin green line. The thin green line separates the wealthy, the people that never have to worry about money, from the people who don't have financial security. Your behavior and the way you manage your money are the determining factors that will dictate on which side of the line you'll end up. Having high income in and of itself means nothing if you spend it all. A goal for your money. Anyone who wishes to end up on the top side of the thin green line must know where each and every of his dollars go there must be a goal for the money. On top of this, spending money on things that appreciate in value rather than things that just lose value over time is also very important. How the wealthy invest their money? The wealthy study the assets that they're buying. They look for market inefficiencies and capitalize on them if possible. They hold their investments over long periods of time and are not afraid to admit and cut their losses quickly. The Bordeaux Dilemma the Bordeaux dilemma is a desire for something amazing but expensive all the time, combined with the awareness that it will limit your ability to pay for more important things in life. Don't let your consumption make you poor. What else do the wealthy invest in? The parents on the right side of the thin green line often tend to spend a lot of money on their children's education. 
The wealthy also love to give back a portion of their money, way more often and a larger portion of their net worth compared to the general population. Thank you for watching, I really hope this video was useful to you. As a final note, let me just clarify that this is summary of a book, it is not investment advice nor my personal opinion. You must always do your own due diligence before investing as it's your money and you and only you are responsible for the consequences of your own actions. Now with that out of the way, thank you all for sharing the videos with friends and of course destroying the like button. There's much more investing, personal finance, business and motivation related content on the way as well as weekly book summaries, so feel free to subscribe if you have not done so yet. I'll see you next week, so enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye!